We are about to go live on uh, our Extreme Ownership Academy live free session. We've got a thousand leaders from all over the place. And it's awesome, just awesome to see so many people that we can reach out through the internet to talk about leadership and be able to answer their questions directly. Looking forward to it. Welcome everybody, I'm Leif Babin from uh, Echelon Front here. And uh, we're gonna get started here with this is, this is uh, just a mimic of what we normally do on Extreme Ownership Academy uh, multiple times a week, every week. And just so, just to give you a little bit of a, of a format, it, it's a bummer we had to cap this at a thousand. Uh, but the reason we do that is because we like the Zoom meeting function rather than a webinar so that we can actually interact with leaders like, like Jared, uh, that you, you can come off mute and actually ask us direct questions. So we just ask that you stay on mute just for the duration uh, un, until you're called on directly. Uh, Jocko's going to put out some information. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, just some uh, leadership concept, and then we're going to open it up for questions. So how we normally do that is run it in the chat. So if you have a question, a leadership uh, focused question, post with, with question, if you put all caps question at the beginning of your post uh, and, and, then, and then put your question in there, try to be as succinct as possible so that we can actually get to you, answer your question. We'll ask you to come off mute for, for more information if needed, uh, and we'll try to get your leadership questions answered. Appreciate you guys joining us today. We have uh, several hundred people on YouTube watching this live stream as well. So uh, thanks for being here. Jocko, get some. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jocko here at Echelon Front. What's up, Jared Bowers? Where are you at? In some kind of manufacturing plant? What do you got going on there? Unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm here in Nashville. I work for a corporate events company. I'm here in the warehouse. I kind of run the day-to-day uh, -day operations of everything. So just tuning in today. Right on. We seem to get down to Nashville quite a bit doing events with companies down there. Well, thanks for tuning in, man. Awesome. Thank you guys for doing this. Yeah, right on. Seems like that was a little bit of a test, Jamie. It seems like we're good to go. You think we're good to go? We're good to go. Go for it. All right. A bunch of people checking in from Texas, from Germany, from Djibouti, from Illinois, from all over the world, from the Swedish army. So a lot of people checking in worldwide. That's very cool to see. And today, the, the tagline that I put is something I was thinking about the other day. And the thing is with leadership is leadership is something that it, 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 every day I wake up and I see it from a different angle and there's a, a new, a new way that I look at it or some, I interact with somebody and I, I think about a different way I could have handled something. Or I think about when I was a young leader, something I could have done better or different. And that's the way leadership is every day to me. And that's one of the things that's cool about what we do here is we get to address leadership from all these different angles, keep it front of mind for everybody. And this, this thought I had the other day when I was talking to a leader was that the power of leadership is not the power of leadership. And oftentimes in order to give someone else power, you have to subordinate your own power. You have to subordinate your own ego. You have to subordinate your own ideas so that the team can, can ascertain what the best way to do something is, what the best idea is, the best way to execute. That's what we want. So to take this method of leadership, to use the power of leadership to give power away, you have to make investments up front. It takes a little bit more effort up front. But if you do that, then your team, your team will be more unified around that plan. Why will they be more unified around that plan? Because they came up with it. You didn't impose it on them. They came up with it. And they will appreciate that their ideas are respected and their ideas are accounted for. And ultimately, the team will execute with much more efficiency and effectiveness because the ideas are everyone's ideas. And when you put all those brains together, you're going to come up with better solutions. And on top of all that, when you listen to each other, when you trust each other, when you treat each other with respect, that's how you form real relationships up and down the chain of command. And when you form real relationships up and down a chain of command, that's when you have an actual team. That's when you have an actual team, a real team that's going to stick together, that's going to overcome problems. And that all starts with that type of leadership. And the best leaders that I've seen, that I've worked for, that I've worked with, the best leaders from the fleet Navy to the aviation community, to the SEAL teams, 
to the Army and the Marine Corps and law enforcement and first responders, and then the hundreds of private sector businesses that we work with all the time in every industry imaginable, the best of all of these leaders, they do not use their power of leadership to force or to impose or to dictate. Instead, true leaders use their power of leadership to give power, to empower other people on the team, to empower subordinates, to let others take ownership. And that right there, that right there is the true power of leadership. And with that, Leif, I know you spent a couple of years in the uh, surface fleet, and I know you ran into some people that certainly like to flex their shoe muscles. I know you work for some good officers too, but what was it like out there? Yeah, I mean, as you're, as you're saying that stuff, Jocko, from, from my perspective, you know, I, I think a lot of, you know, I, I spent four years at the Naval Academy. I spent three and a half years in the surface fleet on two different ships. And there was a great amount of, I, it was an awesome experience for me, for sure. Uh, but a lot of what I learned was like what I didn't want to be. What I didn't want to be, you know, and and that's frankly it was no different in the SEAL teams either, right? Good leadership is rare; uh, it's always that way. Um, but uh, I think when you see some of those negative examples of like, oh, I don't want to be that person. Why do I want? Do I not want to be that person? And and the run and joke we always talked about was was playing, you know, the rock scissors rank game. I outrank you, do it because I said so. Uh, but there were I, I did see in the service fleet there was almost like a, almost like a pride in in like, I'm the captain. In fact, one of my, uh, one of my commanding officers, they gave him a, uh, they gave him a shirt when he was departing that said, I'm the effing captain it was, was the shirt. Cause he said that all the time. I'm just the captain here. I don't need to know about that. He would establish and let everybody know all the time that he was the captain. And obviously you don't need to do that because everyone knows who's in charge. Uh, and, and every time you do do that, instead of gaining respect from people, they're actually losing respect for you. They're actually losing respect. And every time you actually ask how they want to do it and build relationships with them and, and give them ownership, as Jocko's talking about, you're actually, you're actually you're building leadership capital uh, with those folks. They're not losing respect. They're actually gaining it uh, for you. So don't do that. Don't be that person. Nobody likes uh, plans imposed upon them. And if you, if you got to go to the rock, scissors, rank mode, I think you've failed dozens and dozens of time over in your leadership. You, you have failed to actually properly lead people because if you build relationships with people and, and you actually explain the why, uh, you're not going to ever have to do that. You should never have to do that. I think about the times when, when I had to, when I fell on that, it's because it, it was a failure of leadership. I had failed to do the things I needed to do to properly lead. Uh, and it's, it's the worst type of leadership. You should never have to do that. We just wrapped up our uh, EO Academy live session the free session that we just offered up to uh, anybody out there that wanted to join. I think we have over 1,800 attendees on both Zoom and YouTube that were watching this thing, and it'll be posted on YouTube for everybody who wants to see it afterward. Really cool to see the leaders from all over the world. I mean, I just from the, the ones that I saw in the chat, we have people from all across the United States, uh, just about every state. We I saw Czech Republic, Singapore, South Korea, uh, South Africa, uh, Australia, uh, Canada, uh, Eastern Europe, all, all kinds of places around the world. Uh, so really interesting to see um, uh, so many people tuning in and, and everybody these are troopers in the game who actually just had some great questions about leadership. A lot of these things are the same thing. We see so many people, they think that, that their challenges are unique. And one of the things we get to see at Echelon Front is that we, we, get, to, we get to take and apply the, the lessons that we teach from the principles of extreme ownership to help solve their problems. And I think the recognition is that, that pretty much everybody has the same struggles, the same challenges of trying to get a group of people with diverse perspectives and backgrounds and skill sets to work together as a team in order to accomplish a mission and win. Uh, and that's these leadership challenges apply to pretty much any team in any situation. So thanks to everybody that joined out there. Awesome to see that kind of impact around the world. And uh, looking forward to doing more of that as we do it uh, multiple times a week at uh, Extreme Ownership Academy. Come get some.